And hey everybody, welcome to Evil Dead the Game. Um, appreciate you stopping by. This is Cassie and Black Cloak, your host as always. And today I'm going to be showing you my first build for this game. This is for the Necromancer Demon. And um, this is the only character I have maxed out so far, the only demon class. So uh, this build is one I kind of put together as I was playing, um, leveling it up. And then kind of switched a few things around. And I, I feel comfortable with this build. Um, I kind of think of it as like my um, buff Drogman and Army build. Um, I don't really have a name for it. It's just like basically I just try to make everything um, somewhat tougher and more effective. Um, but let's go over the basics here. Um, first, in case you haven't played the game yet, I'm going to cover the Necromancer class real quick. Um, basically, the class centers around this guy here, which is your flautist. Um, some people call him different things. The flute player, the flutist, the doot doot boy. Um, I just call him the bard is the way I think of him um, because you know I'm a nerd and he basically is a bard so basically what this guy does is give you a bonus to your damage and a bonus to your damage reduction so it makes your uh, units that are on the field when he's out within um, his range it makes them tougher and do more damage um, upgrading it as you level these uh, upgrades on the side kind of pop open on their own as you level up I think this one's level 10, level 25, level 45 something like that but this uh, Skelophobia, basically this gives you a bump to the fear that you generate from your skeletons. Uh, this one gives you um, an extra effect. So this starts at like 70% damage increase and 30% damage reduction. This makes it 90%, almost double the damage and a 50% damage reduction. So you get a huge buff once you get to that point. And then this one um, makes them do take 10% extra damage um, from nearby skeletons. So basically, once you hit 45 and you have the bard out, your units are doing 100% extra damage while he's up. And that also affects the boss, as well as the skeletons and the elites. So let's go over real quick the um, talents here, and then we'll get into a match, and I'll go over the build order in match. So I'm just going to go through this real quick here. Um, so basically, um, I started off with, even though this unit, this build is centered around basic units, I started out with uh, Rocksteady Elite here, um, basically just to give them a little bit of extra boost to the balance bar damage um, resistance, because that balance bar, there's two types of damage in this game. There's the balance bar damage, which is like your stagger or stun, and then there's also your health, which is like, you, can, you know, what actually causes you to die. So, um, because I don't have anything to boost up their health or damage, I did go ahead and put Rocksteady here to make sure it's going to take them a little bit longer to get stunned and they can actually put out a little bit of damage, do some work. Um, same thing here with Rocksteady for basic units. Um, same deal, it just makes them harder to stagger so they can't, the survivors can't um, employ special attacks and finishers as quickly. Um, Infernal Revenue, um, this uh, basically just gives you some... 20% um, extra once it's at level 3 for the infernal orbs you pick up for energy. Um, Rocksteady boss does the same thing for the boss as the others. Um, health rays are basic. This is basically giving my basic units a 30% bump in their basic health, like their maximum health. So now that we covered that first row, I'm going to go over the tier 2 ones here. Um, so this one I only sunk 2 into because I needed the points further up, so I took one back out. Um, which you can do with this, uh, I love the talent system, you don't have to completely respec, you can pull out point at a time and kind of redistribute them. But this basically gives you an extra range on the uh, special attack your basic skeletons get, which over here you see is the uh, war cry that's on the triangle, it's like an AoE uh, smack they do, so that's nice. Um, Portal Authority Elite, this was a dump, uh, basically I just had to put a point somewhere and I just went ahead and put it into this to give me just a little bit of a discount. Um, a little bit of a discount on the elites which you know and I can't pull that out of here pull that point out and switch it over right now because I have these other talents that need the points in there to access because you have to put a certain amount in the talent tree to unlock the next tier so on and so forth so we'll just go ahead and um, um, move on here so um, like I said I did the elite thing so yeah this uh, scarier demonic dash once again this was just a dump point I had to put into to get further up the tree it just basically boosts the uh, fear that you uh, generate per target when you hit them with the demonic dash skill uh, this gives you same thing it's just for inter uh, infernal energy it gives you 
um, 110 infernal energy for every uh, survivor you hit when you dash. Alright, so now let's go ahead and go out these uh, skill tree lines here to look at these and how they progress. So this skill, um, test of time, this basically makes it a little bit, uh, takes it longer, 15% longer for them to complete objectives, like the dagger or the pages, the ones where they have to basically time them, so that's handy. That gives you a little bit more time to try and down them and prevent them from winning. Um, come back stronger, it helps you buff your skeletons the evil Ash brings back. Um, that's like his um, triangle ability is Skeletal Resurrection. He can actually summon skeletons to battle manually and also resurrect dead ones if the survivors have killed within his area of effect. <clears throat> so basically what this does is boost all of that. They get, they come back with, uh, they have st better maximum health, come back fully healed, and they can deal more damage. So there's like four things there in effect. So definitely want that maxed out. And then this uh, little talent here gives us an extra range to our uh, bard. So this means you can pay him way out and still have him cover part of the objective. I mean, up to almost 50 yards away, um, roughly, you can put him there and still have a good chunk of the uh, of the area of the battleground covered there. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this one here real quick. This is um, heavy damage basic. It just gives you basically 20% uh, more damage for your basic units per hit. Definitely handy. Um, so let's see here. Um, this one, uh, moving down here to this row, Portal Authority Basic. This just gives you like a 25% discount um, when you summon basic units. And since this build is centered around basic units mainly, yeah, definitely want that. Um, Health Razor Boss, uh, again, good to have because, um, you know, my boss does a lot of work in this build too. So this is kind of like a split level focus. It's like the boss, Evil Ash, and the, the basic units because they synergize together where he can summon them and also bring them back. Um, healthy Bones, basically this just gives you an extra 250 health on your bard, so he's harder to kill. Fantastic little talent there. Um, bone Rage, uh, this basically just makes your AI units attack 10% more often, um, which that's something they need to fix, because the AI units, they will, basically like one or two of them may engage with a survivor, but the other ones will stand around and cheer them on and not try to attack too. <laughs> Which is kind of bullshit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, that that bugs me, but um, that's why I usually am making sure if I got the energy, I'm possessing one of the units to make sure I'm getting some damage in. Um, irre uh, irreparable damage gives you basically a second um, after you damage a survivor with evil ash before they can heal the shimps. So that can uh, maybe give you the extra little bit you need to get a to get a last hit into town them. If they're trying to dodge back and dodge back and you manage to hit them before they try to do that last dodge and heal, that one second might be all you need. But also, I had to put it in to get to this talent, which gives me an extra skeleton when I summon reinforcements with Evil Ash. So when I hit the square button with him, that's what the, on the controller here for PlayStation, it goes, um, basically, when he summons his units, I get one extra. So that definitely helps. Uh, this one I thought should have been much further back in the tree, definitely. Um, in fact, I probably would have switched this one and um, Elite um, around in the tree order. But uh, this just gives you a discount of 15% uh, on summoning basic units out. So basically you just get, you know, it costs less energy to summon them. And then also they're doing extra damage, of course. Now, this is the last two to go over here. Buff Bones, I, t I had to put one point into this to get to the last skill. That I wanted, so this this still does give them a 10% health boost and 10% damage increase um, for the skeletons that he flashes them to battle. That's just the ones that he pulls in, though, not all of them. So that's the ones that he actively summons. But still, I'll take it. Uh, Relentless Evil. Uh, this reduces the cooldown of your bard, and I've got two into this because basically that's all the points I had to work with. I would have to pull something else out, and I don't really want to um, for that extra like 10% buff, but. Basically, this means you can pull your bard out more often um, because the cooldown's shortened. So uh, that's the build here, and the way this works together is basically that you're looking to uh, find the survivors quickly, and um, hopefully by that point you've also reached threat level three, so you can have basic portal, and then you're basically going to um, rush them with uh, basic units right off the bat and stay on them and eat up the resources and make sure that they can't make it to the end of the game. That's the idea, ideally. 
Um, and hopefully you can even catch them split up so you can drop a couple of them and then go after the others because you do get more in-game experience from uh, down knocking survivors down than also when they die. So that's, that definitely helps. But uh, let's take a look at a, at a match I had here um, using this build and uh, let me show you how it all works. Okay, and here we are in the match, so let's go ahead and um, see our build in action here. So what I'm doing here is looking for um, a place I can try to search for the survivors, because I want to find them as quickly as possible. Um, and I'm um, looking at the uh, so-called spawn theory. Um, I was guessing they'd probably be in the uh, middle to north part of the map, closer to where I'm at, but um, I don't think they were. Um, but you're going to see here what I'm doing is I'm basically um, set a point on the map where I think they might be based on where everything spawned in and I'm um, basically looking to get over there to start trying to hunt them down and also along the way I'm going to pick up infernal energy orbs and sick traps things like that to try and increase my threat level so I can start getting out my basic units you have permitted the living to collect um, a fragment of but you can see look they already found the one map page uh, within the first minute of the game them. less than a minute so that's definitely means I gotta move quickly because this team is um, you know I know they're gonna try to rush everything so um, which on the one hand keeps me from getting as powerful but on the other hand they don't have as much time to loot so they're not as strong either so it's kind of a trade-off but this game is unique in the fact that it has an in like an in match leveling system along with your actual general leveling because you actually um, you'll see here you level up your skills and abilities and stuff in the match with your XP that you get for uh, yeah so I just got my first threat level here so I'm gonna put that in possession to start with because that's the you know one of the things I can do right now to try and interact with survivors is to possess them or possess some of the units that are um, already on the map or that might spring from the traps that I set um, now you see here I switched uh, I went out I went back to trap that box because one it gives me a lot of threat level two if they do try to open that, um, they're going to get hit by many ashes and it's going to steal some of their items. So um, I definitely always make sure to trap crates and I use many ash to try and whittle down the resources. Because I've seen those many ashes take up to like, you know, three shims colas from somebody when they open a thing. So when they open a crate, so it's pretty handy. Um, and right now I'm looking at where else I can try to go because they've already found the second map piece. And I think in less than three or four minutes, I mean, they're moving pretty quick. Um, I believe they have the entire map um, here shortly, but I'm basically, at this point, I'm kind of I'm kind of rushing to catch up. Um, because I know they're moving quickly. This is like the only game that I played today, so this was like my one and only match so far of the evening. So this is like my, my if you want to call it a warm-up match, it was a hell of a one. Um... But you see here, I'm basically moving toward that uh, marker I set the on the map there. The and yep, there they go. They got the they got the map the piece, so now that marker's pointless. So now I'm going to try to instead go down toward this area where I know they're going to be heading toward the map, the uh, pages and the dagger, because they can see those now. And there we go. I've got, I finally got my basic portal. Um, so now I can actually, uh, when I do find them, I can actually attack them directly. Which, and, and this strategy, keeping in mind, um, was born out of the early, you know, when this game first came out, demon players had no early game presence to speak of. I mean, the survivors were running around like crazy, looting everything, just getting buffed up before the demon ever found them. It took them like, you know, forever, like maybe 10, 15 minutes to, to find the survivors and get enough threat level to actually do anything. But now, a month in... Um, we figured out there's quite a bit we can do early game. So uh, this is just like like this meta right now is just a natural progression of that. So okay, yeah. So they started the pages. So getting back in the gameplay here, um, we're going to yeah we're going to go after them because they're starting the pages. And I think there's only one person on them because they're moving so slowly. And this is going to be one that I'm going <laughs> to you're going to see how. Um, survivors can really waste the demon's time here but um, so basically there's one of them up here at the pages so I'm figuring this is probably gonna be an easy kill um, because there's only one person up here but it's Kelly so I'm gonna go up here and drop my basics 
Now keep in mind from what you saw in the build, these things are, my basics are basically almost as tough as they possibly can be, but Kelly here is just basically going to avoid everything. She's going to stay in the circle to keep the timer running. And I want you to watch how quick, how often and how quickly she dodges. I mean, most characters can only dodge once, twice maybe, before their stamina is depleted, but because of her skill and the build she's running, I'm guessing this is probably like a level 25 Kelly who's been playing the game pretty sweaty. She is just massively good at dodging. What are you going to do? I mean, it's seriously hard. Like, trying to hit her enough to kill her is, like... I mean, it, it, it's... it's She's so slippery, man. I mean, it's like trying to hold on to a freaking... Um, fistful of, like, wet, really spaghetti noodles. You know, I mean, it's like... No, no, it's not even that. I can't even think of a good comparison. Because this is probably, like, the best single survivor player I've ran up against so far. And I'm guessing we're going to see a lot more of these as the game goes on. It's probably going to get, like, resistance where you're going to see... Um, a lot of really sweaty survivor squads come out, and um, yeah, especially when they start going into like getting steady pre-mades and um, getting into like SWAT team level. But uh, this game has a little bit more of an option to counter stuff like that than Resistance did. I like that because I have the option to put stuff into my end match build and unlock it based on what I need. So I'm going after her again. And I'm pretty sure at some point, yeah, there's somebody else that shows up here. Um, so you see I got a hit in on her there, but she's almost dead, but I can't finish her off. See, she just, and she does a lot of damage with that gun, too. Yeah, there's the second party member over here now. So somebody finally came to help her. Um, but you're going to see the difference versus, like, the Kelly versus the other survivors. Um, I mean, I can down them pretty quickly. See? Down. Bleeding out. And you notice that I'm getting threat levels down there on the right-hand side. That's, that's where you see your... Um, so I've actually got an in-game point to spend again. Um, and like I said, I would go over my build order. Basically, what I try to do is for my first two points, they go into possession. And then uh, after that, you know, they go into possession and then basic portal. And then after that, infernal energy. That's where my first three points usually go to. Um, and then from that, I build them out to, um, I'll either put one more into basic or I'll unlock the elites at that point for the fourth point, just depending on what's going on in the match at the time, but, um, because I like having that option to spawn the elite units, I have, um, I like to unlock my abilities as quickly as possible. Um, and then of course, once they hit threat level 10, I always put that one into the boss, but, um, yeah, see, they just get, see, she managed to elude me long enough there and stay alive to... Is basically what my ass. But you see there, I've got, like, I had a bunch of points to spend, so I buffed out my um, Infernal Energy collection, because each time, you know, each level that gives you um, an additional amount you pick up, plus it starts starting, plus at a certain point it starts regenerating so many per second passively, which that helps. Um, but that first uh, dig in there gives you a boost in your cap, too. I think it goes to... I think it gives you an extra 40 or 50, you can hold something like that. But now they've, uh, but you see that the, as soon as I got exercised over there, they had already started this um, dagger. But I'm going to take care of this this uh, pretty quick here. Because if you notice, I just got another point here, and I'm going to go ahead and pop it into my boss, because he's open now, so I'm going to send an evil hatch. Now here's what I was talking about. You see I've got the, um, now right there, what I did was I just used my resurrection aura, and then I summoned my skeletal support. And you can see now with the units I spawn, plus and plus the evil ash units, you can see this place is just covered with AI units. And she tried to get her heal out there, but I was able to DPS her down enough to where she dropped. And thank Cthulhu, unlike Resistance, that ground heal, like Valerie's healing spray does in that game, unlike, unlike Valerie's healing spray in Resistance, Cheryl's little heal she drops there does not pick up down survivors. They still have to go through the process of actually um, holding the button to, to assist them and get them back up. And at this point, there's no one else here, and I've shut down the objective they were trying to capture, so I'm pretty much just going to go ahead and yeah, I'm going to drop my boss and let him go. And then I'm going to just, I, I would just test him here because I hadn't thought of it to see if I could get some more energy off souping her with the 
demonic dash. So I'm going ahead and building up my boss, and you see my elite. I probably need to go ahead and finish my basic portal if I haven't already, because once you get that to five, you actually get an extra unit pop out with it. So instead of two units per portal, you get three. So that means you can summon like um, I think like six at a time, because you can you can your cooldown you can store. You have like a, a full with full cooldowns up. You've got two um, portals of each you can put down plus the boss. Um, if he's off cooldown, so you can actually summon um, up to two basic portals, two elite portals at a time if they're off cooldown. So at this point, I'm basically just um, yeah, I'm putting down my flute boy here and putting a trap here to try and protect him. I don't have any infernal energy to be able to um, summon the portal like I want, but right here I'm going to try to get him with a tree for some fear. I don't have enough to possess a survivor. Um, I did have just a little bit to possess this. He's kind of pointless. So they're going to try and resurrect their friends. So I'm going to go over here and see if I can try to stop that. But I have like no infernal energy, so I'm not stuck. I can't really do anything. I can't possess her, which I would like to be able to do. And there's no energy around here, so I'm kind of stuck. I mean, they got really lucky here. That, I mean, this, this should have been game over at this point here. But, um, and once again, Super Kelly. She's really, really good. Um, you can see she's basically carrying her whole team in this match here. So now I was able to possess her, but she's already got the revive. So I'm not able to really do much of anything to them. Um, and oddly enough, she had just a white shotgun, which is crazy. I think she'd have a better gun. But once again, they aren't really, um, where they've been rushing so much, they're not really looted. So uh, my guess is they're probably planning to try and, my guess wasn't it was correct, they were probably going to try to loot after um, getting the uh, pages and the dagger while I'm recovering. So then we're going to possess this dude here. Four, five. So you see there's like three of them on me. And see that little white bar that was underneath my health bar? That's the balance bar I was talking about. And now you see my health going down. And notice when they broke my balance bar and uh, I lost my shield and then through the dismemberment damage they were able to take off my arm. Because there's like um, different types of damage in this game too. You've got your general like health damage, your dismemberment damage, and then you've got your balance bar damage. So each weapon's got a three different damage values you got to contend with. So there, there's like a lot to this game actually. It seems simple on the surface, but there's quite a bit to it, um, and I like that. So yeah, here. Um, so and if you notice, once they died, the objective stopped and um, it went back to basically scratch. So that's why I had that. So I defended it successfully at that point. There was nothing they could do there um, because you know those two they couldn't fight me like the Kelly did so I'm going over here and I'm waiting for them to get over away from this area because I plan to put my flautist my bard over inside of this little shed right here and I'm gonna go ahead and hit this trap here just as a way to protect him if they try to run in at him and um, and just so you're aware there's there's not that I've determined there's not a limit to how many units you can have on the map at one time like you can have like I mean well probably well over a dozen um, if you're able to get them get them out and keep them up that long between traps and everything so you're looking at about yeah I mean you can really swamp them and you see there's a lot of units here so I'm gonna go ahead and try to fight them and hold this objective and try to win the game here because um, if you get all four survivors down, like, or all the survivors are down at the same time, you win. There's no one to bring, there's no one to bring them back. Um, which is another thing I like better than resistance. Once you kill a survivor, they don't respawn automatically. Um, and they get to keep going. They're, they're dead unless their teammate brings them back. But you can see Kelly here, she is just, I mean, she's almost untouchable, man. She is just a freaking problem. If you notice, I got almost the whole team down but Kelly. And I'm getting ready to get everybody but Kelly down. Yep, there goes the Cheryl. She's down. So now it's just the Kelly left. But she is actually going to manage to take out most of my, <laughs> most of my army. And she's also going to 
um, lead me on a merry chase here. I mean, she was sweaty. This is a very, very, very sweaty Kelly. And she's good. I mean, th this player is good, really good. Um, so I got no, I got mad respect. Um, so if you ever see this, whoever you are, whichever, whoever that Kelly was, um, congrats, you're fucking good, man. And, um, and she knows also that if she can manage to evade me long enough, if she finishes this objective, all of her teammates will be revived too. Because uh, if they finish an objective like this, it resurrects everybody. If at the page of the dagger, once they're completed, if anyone's dead map wide, it resurrects them even if they're not here at the objective. Um, once again, that's something I think should be changed that's a little unbalanced. Uh, because I can only be in one place at a time. And you notice how almost, every time I almost drop her, she manages to just get away and use an amulet or shimps. Um, which means that she's hoarding them from the healer, which is that's fine with me. Um, I'd rather just have to do with just one person. Um, leave me on a merry chase rather than just, uh, you know, the whole team stay alive all the time. So I've actually been out long enough now where I've been able to do my cooldowns again. Um, even though she, I think she tried to get in the car at some point and run over some of my stuff. She might have already done that. I've just been rambling here watching the footage, but at some point I remember her getting in the car. But I'm definitely eating through her resources here, so that's fine. Um, so I'm just basically, you know, she's basically having to use everything she's got to try and stay alive and capture this objective. And you can see, if not for the talents that I had for uh, making that take longer, they would have already been done. And she would have saved her friends already. But I'm going ahead here and dropping a couple more things, even though this is pretty much the end of it, because it's going to kick in and exercise me here in a second. Oh, there it goes. So it's going to exercise me and throw me out of the area and resurrect the whole team. So this is also why as a survivor you should not disconnect even in that kind of situation. The Kandarian dagger and lost pages have been taken. The human's next target will be the dark So now I'm going to try to recover. Um, and get back to the dark ones. But I'm also going to try to, um, you know, once I get back over that area, I'm going to try to loop back around and go to um, and I'm going to try to head them off the pass and keep pressure on them. Yeah, okay, so now we're over at the Dark Ones and is any, any over here? I want to say I think we're over at the next little area. Um, trying to, yeah, I'm trying to get everything sorted out. So I'm You're basically, so I was going to try to waste her ammo, but she didn't have any gun. So I'm just going to basically possess her for the XP. And she takes damage from the possession, but I'm just going to basically run her over away from the dark one. Since she's the closest one here, I'm just going to run her over here to the road and hop out of her real quick and then drop a couple units to chase her around and harry her a little. Um, but yeah, you can see here, so um, while we're waiting on them, we go over um, getting back to build order. I basically try to get, um, you know, I, I don't max one thing out um, at a time. A lot of times because you, you can't. Um, you got to reach a certain threat level before you can reach the next tier. So I do uh, definitely I prioritize possession, infernal energy, and basic units. Uh, basic units, possession are the top ones, and then the boss when he becomes available, I put points in boss whenever it's available to its max. Um, at five out of five because it makes him the most dangerous he can be. So you've got a um, so basically you know, with the, if you're running this build, you're going to prioritize. Your basic units, your possession, your infernal energy, and your boss. Um, elite, um, you just drop those in as you as you can, or after you get the other ones maxed out, if you want, because really they're just there to be um, kind of like cannon fodder or another option for survivors to go after. Just put out a little extra pressure um, when you're at one of those big um, interactions. So, like one of those big big objective spots. It's like I'm trying to kill Amanda here. Put her down. Because if she goes down, I get more XP, of course. Um, 
I think I'm just a little shy of being able to kill her. I want to I think she... I run out of energy to water them. Oh yeah, no, she got to the car. That's it. No, that was what it was. Okay, so... Um, I'm still hanging out over around this area just in case they show up. But... At a certain point I realize I need to start going ahead and... Um, trying to find where they are on the map and go over to them so they stop gathering resources. And you notice that um, sometimes I can't see them on the map unless they're terrified they're in a vehicle or they're making noise. Um, until you, unless you want to level up Demon Vision, which is honestly kind of a waste of uh, talent points. So I possessed the car here, not the smartest move. Um, I just basically drove it away for a second to see if I could crash it into that rock to see if I could disable it, but it didn't. Um, but I'm going ahead and dropping my units here just to you know, get a little bit of threat level off of it. Hope I'm trying to break the vehicle, we'll see if I can get one of them to get in it. That kind of stuff. But they'll also um, kind of follow the survivors, so they'll start moving that direction. And they might even um, make their way over here by the time everything is um, kicking off. They might run all. They might actually run all the way over here and join the fight. Um, so right now I'm just going through and um, dropping everything I can that I got the energy for. And I'm going to try to get a little more energy. Yeah, I hit one of them. I'm not very good at the amount of dash. It's like, unfortunately, it's like my default in this game. I'm just not very good at it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and basically try to drop these survivors. Um, yeah, my, actually my AI unit got one down there. That's, that's a rarity. And you notice they're zapping the dark ones, that's what the Kandari Zagger does. So they're, they basically have to hold that um, damage on there until they uh, basically wipe them out. There's like three tiers of health they got to get down to. But if you notice that I've gotten down everybody but, once again, it's now down to me in that, um, I can tell it again. So I'm basically um, going to end up chasing her right here. Now, you notice, she's going to stop trying to... Um, kill the dark ones because she knows if she goes if she does that last little bit there um, her team's gonna be permanently dead and um, on the other hand though she probably should have done that because they were already dead anyway and she could have um, you know basically just nuked me around for two minutes and won the match but um, she was actually trying to save her team which is um, the one thing she did wrong here if she had actually went ahead and um, DPS down the Dark One somehow, uh, which she might not have been able to between the pulse they put off, um, all the um, skeletons are still running around in me, she might not be able to hold um, the damage on it long enough to matter. So, because once the Dark Ones go down, it's like a two minute rush to either um, kill the rest of the survivors or destroy the Necronomicon for the demon. So, um, and at this point, I would basically have to go for the Necronomicon because there would be no way I'd be killing her within two minutes. Um, and you notice here, I'm about out, but she's terrified. So what I'm going to do here is kind of a 400 IQ move. As soon as I drop him, I'm going to possess her. Since I can't hit her, I'm going to take her over since she's finally possessable and just run her ass into the Dark Ones here and let them take care of her. Because um, she's going to take some damage from me being in possession of her and also... Um, the dark one, so I basically just bring her into this to let the possession of the dark ones kill her. So, there you go. Um, so that's my build in action. You can see that team pushed me almost to the limit, um, but it does work. Um, you just, it's an attrition build. You just wear them down, eat up the resources, and destroy them. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I appreciate you stopping by. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz, and we'll catch you Black Cloaks in the next game. Take care. Bye.